Hey everyone, uh, welcome to our demo session uh, about the latency and why it's the most important thing, uh, the most important metric of your cloud. Uh, how many of you know who Storpol is? Storpol? Okay, v very few, right? So, um, so first, my role in the company, I'm the chief of product, one of the founders. Um, Cloud architect, meaning I help a lot of our customers who are cloud service providers build and design and kind of deploy uh, cloud services. Uh, and my background used to be, I used to do kind of packet processing and, and uh, kind of millions of packets per second on standard servers. Uh, and even before that, I used to kind of compete, uh, do competitive programming, uh, which is a very interesting stuff if any of you knows that. Uh, what we do is a very kind of fast and efficient uh, software-defined storage system. We deliver it as software and services on uh, customers' servers in, in customers' data center. We started a long time ago in my youth, <laughs> um, and it's a clean slate design. So it's not based on anything. It's, it's our own uh, design from scratch, um, and that makes it quite um, more capable and has a lot of kind of different capabilities to the storage systems you may be used to. Um, most of our deployments are with KVM, so even though we do have some deployments with uh, VMware and Zen and Hyper-V, uh, KVM is uh, the most popular hypervisor among our customers, and we do uh, have uh, deep integrations into OpenStack and CloudStack and OpenNebula and ONAP and also in Kubernetes. So we play a lot in this uh, kind of Linux KVM uh, uh, stack. Right. Um, so, back to our kind of topic for today. Uh, every uh, transaction processing system, be that a load balancer, a web server, an application server, a database, a storage system, all of them have a performance characteristic that goes something like this. So you have like operations per second and average latency per operation. If you increase the operations per second, you also get slightly li higher latency. So for example, one task on four cores takes one second, two tasks one second, four tasks still one second. So this is still kind of one second per task completed, right? Where this model breaks is when you get six tasks on four cores or more, uh, and then it's not uh, six tasks in uh, kind of one, mili one second per task, it's six tasks tasks at 1.5 seconds per task. So you didn't do more work. Uh, you just hit uh, what we call a you know, saturation point, and uh, these systems tend to have two very different modes of operation. W one we call the elastic mode, where you, know, you, add, you have more demand, you get more, more work done. And then in the congested mode, you get more demand, you don't get more work done. Uh, so in kind of your application where you want to run your systems to get kind of the best user experience, pages opening fast, etc., is in this part of the curve. So imagine, you know, you have all kinds of different systems, storage, uh, databases, application servers, all kinds of systems, message queues. You want to run them at that part of the curve. Well, you wouldn't run them like some of your systems, you would run higher in the curve because it's more cost efficient. Uh, but the problem with running them close to the knee, close to the saturation point, is that the moment you go over the saturation point, uh, it's only pain. Uh, only pain means kind of operations piling up, uh, so the, uh, kind of pi stuff piling up in queues, and you, you don't get just slightly higher latency, you get infinite latency. So, so kind of really long queues that the system is trying to, to push through uh, slowly. So this characteristic of the system, how high uh, the saturation point is, you, you can call that the th throughput of the system in, in some metric, right? So most of, um, you know, system vendors, uh, storage vendors, database vendors, they, they like to brag about, you know, how many operations per second uh, their system can do. Uh, most cloud operators, when they sell you uh, virtual disk, they tell you this virtual disk has this many IOPS. But in reality, like for the performance of your application, this doesn't matter at all. Like what matters is the, how that system behaves 
in the part of this curve where you're going to use it. So it doesn't matter how high the line is, right? It only matters like um, how low the latency is for the number of operations per second that you're going to put on put on that system. Well, with one exception. So th the only reason you care about system throughput is that you don't want to kind of you don't want to get into the situation of going over the system throughput and uh, and kind of exceeding the system throughput, right? Uh, so a system that has a million IOPS um, helps you avoid uh, going over over the knee, right? So um, the demo I've prepared is that uh, I have two different um, storage systems, two different virtual disks. Both of them have 20,000 IOPS, meaning if I take uh, kind of feel and measure how many IOPS per second both of these volumes have, they will both return, to, uh, say, it's 20,000 IOS per second. Uh, so both of them could be sold by, say, uh, in one uh, cloud or another cloud, and they, they will have the same specification of you know, 20,000 IOS per second. And uh, I'll show that um, application performance will be very different on the two volumes, even though they're both 20,000 IOS per second volumes. right? Um, so what we have is um, one virtual machine with eight vCPUs and 16 gigs of RAM, a virtual disk with 20,000 IOS per second, and a PostgreSQL database, uh, which is four times uh, the memory. It's, it's a fairly small database, to be honest, like a 64 gigabyte database. And in large web applications, uh, these databases would be kind of significantly larger than that. So, so it's not kind of a, a very uh, extreme uh, case. Uh, can you guys see this, or should I make, make it bigger? Who doesn't see it? You don't see it. OK. I'll try and make it slightly bigger then. Um, just one second. There we go. All right, so um, how do we show it's 20,000 IOS per second? Uh, we're going to run this test on it. Uh, and this is uh, not, not the latency test, sorry. Uh, this is a um, random reads and writes, 50% um, reads, 50% writes with block size 4K and a large Q-depth, so a lot of parallel operations, uh, on a file which is on, on that virtual disk. Um, and it didn't even get 20, uh, sorry, 20,000 IOS per second. Second, second time, so this is the demo effect. <laughs> um, so, so we can show that that, that volume does 20,000 IOS per second. So uh, 10,000 reads and 10,000 writes, total 20,000, OK? And um, PGBench is a benchmarking tool uh, provided by PostgreSQL. Uh, the way we use it here is uh, kind of completely following uh, kind of the described test methodology by Postgre. It's not kind of a, a complete random benchmark that, that we wrote. It's an established benchmark. Uh, so what we do here is there are um, 16 clients in parallel uh, on eight threads. Why eight threads? Because it has eight vCPUs. Uh, we'll see progress every second, and kind of total benchmark time is 10 seconds. And what we can see here is uh, kind of the that with this many clients in parallel, this database can do there is the kind of average transactions per second for the whole test. So that's uh, I'll try to bring that higher. Um, let's do that a bit higher. So 1,400 uh, transactions per second uh, on this volume. So what this gives us, so the 
uh, storage vol volume underneath has 20,000 IOPS. The database we put on top does 1,400 transactions per second, okay? So if we try, if we ask our database to do, um, say, 1,500 transactions uh, per second, what would happen is, so in this comment here, lag, uh, this will, uh, well, it didn't increase high enough, so let's, let's try something slightly higher. Um, so you have like a queue of operations piling up and now database transactions are not taking a few milliseconds, they're taking four seconds and five seconds and a few minutes later they will be taking a lot more because we're asking this database to do more than, 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 than what it can do. Now, um, if we switch to another volume, uh, so what this does is kind of switches the, the storage underneath and, and uh, restarts the database on, on, on the faster uh, storage. That storage also, um, that's also a kind of 20,000, try a second time, um, 20,000 IOPS uh, storage, you know, so 10,000 reads and, and 10,000 writes. And uh, that database without the limit does about 3,000 transactions per second. So what we saw here is two virtual disks, both of them with 20,000 IOPS limit, right? So, so the, okay. But the database with the same number of parallel clients, the database can do twice as many uh, transactions per second which means that when you go to a public cloud operator and you buy a virtual disk with 10,000 IOPS provisioned on it, that doesn't tell you anything about the performance of the application you, you're going to get on top, right? Uh, and kind of it's the state of the industry and why I'm doing this talk that we, we need to talk, like when analyzing performance, we need to talk about kind of the elastic part of the curve. We, we don't need to talk. You know, the IOPS is interesting, but it's, it's not where you we run our applications, right? And uh, same thing, so if we do uh, RAID 1750, a database that can do 3,000 transactions per second, if we ask it to do uh, 1,700 transactions per second, it, you'll obviously not get a pile up of operations. You get, you know, it's pretty happy uh, processing, uh, processing days. or something. Um, all right, so, all right, okay. Uh, moving on. So, we, uh, we are in the process of kind of um, collecting uh, interesting application benchmarks. So we think um, it's not kind of, it's not well established that uh, services which look identical on, on specification can be so different from each other. Um, and what we did is, uh, it's still in progress, but uh, we've started this process and we got virtual machines from a bunch of different uh, public cloud operators. Um, and measured uh, the random reads and writes with QDepth1 on the different operators. In DigitalOcean, we got like about two milliseconds. In uh, DreamHost, the Dream Compute service, we got about five milliseconds average latency uh, for four kilobyte storage operations, right? Um, and so what do we learn from this? That, you know, DigitalOcean is very good at running Ceph, right? Uh, their Ceph cluster is three times faster than uh, everybody else's. You know, it's, they've, they've done a good job. The problem with this is that if you go to Amazon Web Services and you just buy, uh, you know, EBS service from them, you get uh, 0.3 milliseconds average latency, right? So it's not competitive. It's, if I'm an application developer, I run my application on DigitalOcean and uh, I will outgrow DigitalOcean at some point and I will move to AWS, right? 
is just not competitive at all with, with the market leaders. And um, like we also measure that in a kind of production uh, store pool cluster. Uh, this cluster specifically is running uh, shared hosting services. It's about 80% full. Unfortunately, it's not a public cloud, but it's kind of a fairly well loaded uh, system. Uh, and we're going kind of trying to get a public cloud service um, uh, in this so, so you can guys can try out the same thing. Um, so I wonder uh, like if there is uh, seven times difference in latency of the underlying storage system. So, so, so the way this test is designed, what it does is uh, it tells us how far this end of the curve is from, 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 from the beginning, right? So it doesn't describe the whole curve, it just tells us where, where the starting point uh, is. So if you have seven times difference in that, what would be the difference in um, database performance or kind of application performance? Uh, and the difference is kind of night and day. Uh, so on digital ocean block storage, which is self based you could get, uh, like, if you have an application that needs, say, 500 transactions per second uh, in a transactional database, uh, you may run that on DigitalOcean and you'll get, like, 20 seconds, uh, 20 milliseconds latency uh, for your transactions, right? But if you go to AWS, the same 500 transactions per, per second, you would, you would get the same thing for 1.5 milliseconds average latency per transaction, right? Uh, and also, just in case you have an application that needs 2,000 transactions per second, you cannot run that on DigitalOcean, but you can run that on AWS or a faster storage service, right? So the difference between these is kind of the DigitalOcean service is also limited at 10,000 IOS per second the same as the EBS volume. The only difference between the two is uh, latency uh, for, of storage operations. They're both 10K, uh, 10,000 IOPS uh, volumes, right? Uh, and I have a, f a couple of minutes for questions. So if anyone, does anyone kind of want to stand up and defend Ceph? There, there are a lot of Ceph fans here, I'm, I'm sure. No. All right. Any questions? Uh, sorry, I don't hear you. Nope. What about Ceph running over RDMA? I heard a lot. Haven't tried, but. Um, right, so we don't. We are not experts in Ceph, our company, right? And we don't run Ceph clusters. And also, if we were running Ceph clusters, it would kind of, it would be considered bad benchmarking because no one trusts us to do Ceph well, all right? So the best option is, if you have a Ceph cluster and you run Ceph with RDMA, we can run the same benchmarks on your cluster, okay? Uh, I am complete, extremely doubtful that that will make any difference, uh, right? Because I don't think these five milliseconds of latency are kind of the latency to transfer four kilobytes over a network, right? It's kind of somewhere else in the stack. It's not there. Um, Your DMA allows to write directly to memory of another host. So it does, but performance help. So sending like sending four kilobytes over a TCP connection does that take five milliseconds? I don't think it does. It could set, uh, send even uh, one megabyte at one bucket and within. It's not about it's nine, not about nine, throughput. Ten milliseconds. So again, um, nanoseconds. The difference between the systems is not both of these services. So um, you know the digital ocean service on this chart, the green one, and the Amazon EBS service. They're both limited to ten thousand IOS per second. So it's not about, in this case, it's not about how many IOPS can the two it's systems It's not do. about uh, IOPS, it's about latency. Like right, so uh, being uh, able to send one megabyte over the network doesn't help this at all. It's just completely useless to help it. No, I 
mean, size of the package, like you need to less amount of input output operations at at first. Uh, ability to write to memory gives you slightly lower latency. It's very interesting and theoretical, and, and until I it see it running, theoretical. Yeah, <laughs> and, until I run the same benchmarks on, on a system like that, uh, I, I don't believe it. Right. I was curious if you have any. No, we don't. Uh, so, last thing on Ceph, we've heard these kind of performance have been, has been a problem in Ceph for a very long time. We've heard these promises that we're going to fix it in the next version and Blue Store is going to make it better and now RDMA is going to make it better apparently. But, uh, you know, it just never happens. You know, it's just years and years and years and it's, it's not getting better. Blue Store was released. Yeah, it, it, Blue Store helped, but not enough. Okay? Thank you. Uh, uh, let's take that offline because kind of I'm being kicked off stage here. Like my timer is down to zero. <laughs> Uh, th thank you guys.